last. It's designed to thrive in sort of changing environments. It's a different kind of design. It's a bigger design. It's a more exciting design. So that's what gets me going about barominology. Why, why Christians should care about barominology? That's a great question. And I'm going to answer that very simply. Christians should care about it because God made it. I mean, to me, that, that all by itself infuses biology and geology and astronomy with a great deal of importance. Now, I'm not going to put it up on the same level as the Bible and say that I'm some sort of priest interpreting God's revelation, but in a sense, that's exactly what I'm trying to do. I am trying to understand God through what he has made. And it's not, and again, it's not the same as interpreting the scripture and the, the revealed word of God, but the general revelation that God has placed into the, wor into the world, he's made it so obvious, so compelling, that everyone is without excuse. No one can stand there on judgment day and say, hey God, I didn't know about this. They are without excuse. They know it because God put it into creation. And for me to go into it and say, look, here's God. Here's God's design. Here's what God has done here. Here's what God has done there. I've learned more about God by studying the things that he's made. That is something any Christian should be excited about, no matter who they are. They should be excited and thrilled to know more about God so that they have more to share about God. Questions I've answered through the field of barominology. Um, okay, I'm going to have to take a two, just take two here. Uh, let me think a second. <laughs> um, what would be exciting? Yeah, yeah. Let me let me give you an example. Okay, so one of the one of the big things that I've just learned and I've just discovered in my research this summer uh, was this this issue of things that survived the flood on the ark and things that survived the flood outside of the ark. So we know that Noah took two of every animal, two of every land animal, seven of the clean animals, and we know he took food and crops and provisions, probably enough for the voyage and probably enough to recover civilization after the voyage, at least for a while, until they could get their farm going again. And there were things on the outside of the ark that survived in the flood, basically. So we have fish, right? So the fish were in the water and they survived the flood in the water. We have lots and lots of plants. And when you think about it, the things on the ark, they're recovering after the flood with just two individuals. Each kind has two individuals coming off the ark. Whereas, say, a plant kind that survived outside of the ark, well, they could have survived with any number of individuals. They could have survived with many individuals. It could be many individuals of very diverse forms that would be uh, very different from what we see on the ark. And that would suggest that we should expect to see differences between the created kinds that survived the flood aboard the ark and the created kinds that survived the flood outside. And it basically, the most important thing I think that we should expect to find is that the things on the ark should have fewer species in their created kinds than things um, that survived the, the flood outside the ark. And what I've just discovered, and this is very preliminary, it needs to be confirmed, uh, so I don't want to say that this is definitive proof of anything, but the, the kinds that I found that are that survived the ark, survived the flood outside the ark, are about have about three times as many species as the kinds that survived the flood aboard the ark. So it's 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 an exact confirmation, precisely what I expected to see, uh, and I'm uh, I'm very excited about that. I think that's a really significant finding. unanswered questions about barominology. There's thousands. <laughs> thousands of unanswered questions. How many Brahmins are there? That's one big one. I mean, how the, Noah builds this gigantic boat. How much of that space was needed? And I know that one of Ken Ham's points that he likes to point out was that there was more than enough room for lots of people to join Noah. God made enough room on that ark for people to join Noah, and they didn't do it. And I think he's right. I'd like to know how much room was actually being used by the animals. Uh, and to know that, we're going to need to know how many kinds there are. 
Uh, and to know that, then we're going to need to be able to identify kinds. So we're going to need to be able to identify more kinds. Uh, I need to be able to, um, I would love to have uh, a whole list of kinds. 